Stop running down the meh and mundane hallways of life and tap into the magical. My name is Michelle Shutter. I am a life and leadership coach for women and host of the Life Coaching Classroom podcast. I'd like to welcome you to Life Coaching Classroom where we walk with you in the hallways of life so you can align to the beautiful expansiveness of your true self through reconnection, reinvention, and rejuvenation. I'm so glad you're here. Welcome to class. Welcome back to episode 53 on the Life Coaching Classroom podcast. My name is Michelle Shutter. I am the host of this podcast and a life and leadership coach for women. And this is where we move out of the meh, the mundane, the mediocrity, and move into the magical of life. If you are here first time, welcome. If you are returning, welcome. I just love that you are investing in yourself. So the title of this episode is Eating Locusts. And you might think, oh gosh, gross, right? Yeah. Well, when I think of eating a locust, I think, oh my gosh, it makes my stomach turn. However, we're going to use a message that I received today in church. And it was so powerful. And normally I don't record podcasts on a Sunday when people are at home because it's noisy and I'm not exactly sure how it's going to turn out, but it's so fresh in my mind that I want to share this with you. And it doesn't matter what you believe in as far as God, universe, um, a higher source, whatever it is, this message actually applies across all beliefs, which is awesome because like you're here, right? And you're ready to receive this message. And so the message was about um, St. John the Baptist being in the desert. And one of the things he had to do was like he was eating locusts, right? Like that was what he was eating, what he was fueling his body with. And like, that just makes my, my stomach turn when I think of it. However, in the desert, now think about this in the desert, he also had some wild honey and in the desert, would you expect wild honey to be there? Probably not. Right. And because of the wild honey, he was able to sweeten the locust and probably make it a little bit more tolerable to eat. However, the message that was shared this morning was, are you focusing on the problem, which is eating the locusts and having trouble trusting and having faith that something will shift for you? Or are you open to receiving the honey and know that something's going to shift for you? Do you have that faith? Do you have that trust? Now, the example was that, you know, like here in Wisconsin, it's been pretty cold the last few days, uh, really windy. And so were you focusing on the wind and the cold or were you focusing on the sunshine, that, that sweetness of the honey? And it just kind of brought back to light, like the importance of folk of focus, where are we putting our energy? Is our energy going into our problems Or is the energy going into the faith and the trust and the solutions that are revealing itself to us? However, in that time period of having things revealed to us, we also have to have a whole lot of patience, which can be really super challenging on many different levels. So when you look at your life, are you focusing on eating the locusts? and the problems? Or are you focusing on the sweetness of honey? Are you lacking faith? Are you lacking trust? Those are all the problems. Or do you have that faith? Do you have that trust that something's going to shift for you? And all it takes is a little bit of honey to sweeten things up. Like it's such a powerful analogy. So think about like when you're at work or interacting with other people, like where is your focus on that? Do you come home and do you unload on your spouse and and just complain? Is that eating locusts or is that sweetening with honey? Like think of those, even those simple little things, because when you can shift that, your energy shifts and you move into something different, something greater for you. Now, this year, this time of year, I should say, 
can get really heavy for some people because they're like all these things to do, right? And and our time is compromised because there's other things going on. We don't have as much time. But again, where are we focusing our energy? Are we focusing on eating the locust or are we focusing on the little bit of honey that's going to be added to each day when we know and trust that like everything is going to work in our favor? Imagine that, like feel that in your, in your body. When you feel that, like, I know everything's going to work out and work out my favorite. That's a different feeling versus, oh my gosh, like I have so much to do. I'm never going to get this all done. Like that creates the heaviness. Your thoughts create that. So why don't we use our thoughts to create a little bit of honey in our life? What I want you to also think about is, yes, we can focus on the solution, but that's not the only thing. Focus on the inspired action. Focus on the inspired thought. Focus on the feeling that makes you feel good. Because all of that is honey. And I even want you to take it a a step further. I want you to take it a step further because we all know people who are eating locusts. We all know people who complain. We all know people who see everything as the glass is half empty. We all know people who just have that tendency to stay more in in a negative sense, right? It's a little bit challenging or they're not, they're more pessimistic about everything. And what I challenge you to do today is how can you be that bit of honey for them? What can you do differently to inspire somebody? What can you do differently to encourage somebody? And perhaps it's just approaching it from a lens of curiosity with that person. But how can you be that little bit of honey? Because what you put out into the world will be returned to you tenfold. So if you want more honey in your life, you have to put honey out. And this this is kind of like my spin on it, where I'm taking this a step farther. This wasn't what was shared in the message at church today, but using everything that was shared, I want to bring you to this point of, Where can you be the honey for somebody? Keep in mind, though, to be that honey, it requires you to be aware of where you are eating locusts. It requires you to be aware of what your thoughts are because your thoughts can be a locust. Your feelings can be a locust. Your actions can be a locust. And then you're not getting the results that you are seeking. So you have to create that awareness. And so what I invite you to do is I have a perfect tool for you to really explore this a little bit more. It's called the magic of reinvention wheel. And you can't fully stop eating the locusts without awareness. And this tool, this magic of reinvention wheel is gives you that awareness. It is, you, you can't stop eating eating the locusts and think you're going to shift without reinventing yourself, without reinventing your thoughts, your feelings, your actions. Where can you find that? You can find that at lifecoachingclassroom.com forward slash library, because that is actually where you can create your own personalized life coaching library. I have some tools, resources, courses there that you can begin to build your own library. Again, that website is lifecoachingclassroom.com forward slash library. Eating locusts, who would have thought, right? No, it doesn't sound like a good meal. However, it is a great analogy for where we are and where we want to go and really tuning into where are we focusing? Where are we putting our energy? Is that serving us at the highest level that we want? That's for you to decide. I would love to hear where you are shifting, where you are allowing that honey to really permeate your life and the lives of others. So make sure you share 
that with me. Send me a DM, send me a message at hello at lifecoachingclassroom.com. And here's one thing else I want to invite you to do. Share this with somebody else. Spread the honey. We all know people can use more inspiration, more uplifting messages in their life. Be that honey. And wherever you are watching this or listening to it, make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you get notifications when the next podcast drops. I hope you have just an absolutely amazing day, be an amazing you, and I will see you in class. Have you joined our monthly unit study? If not, you better head on over and reserve your seat at lifecoachingclassroom.com forward slash unit. The unit study gives you an opportunity to experience life coaching at no charge. Again, register and get all the details at lifecoachingclassroom.com forward slash unit. I do have a favor. Could you take a moment to share this podcast and life coaching classroom with your besties? Perhaps they too are tired of running down the meh and mundane hallways of life. Let's give them a little spark in their day. Finally, I'd be so grateful if you take a minute to review the podcast. The reviews definitely help to spread the podcast to more women. Thank you. I so appreciate you. And I will see you in class.